What's good? You be back with another video. Hold on, hold on. Let's pause this joint real quick. Cause y'all can see, bro. This video a little different. It's not no hoops, bro. Y'all know who this man is, or some of y'all might know who this man is right here. Freddie Boy Fredo, right? He just dropped a little documentary. Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah. Why I suddenly disappeared from YouTube, from hero to villain. I'm not gonna lie, bro. In my high school days, bro. For all my peoples that know, bro, this nigga. He was on his shit back then, bro. He had the whole world watching his videos, bro. Then he turned out doing some weird stuff. I don't really know, but we about to get straight into the video, see what really happened with my with my guy. You know what I mean? Look at this perfect fucking life. Look at this perfect guy. Look at this perfect family. Look at this perfect shit. It got to a point I'm I'm looking at the video, bro. I'm like, this shit is not even real. You were like filming. Hold up, y'all. Filming videos and stuff. and stuff. I think each video you're pushing that boundary just a little bit more than you normally would, and then the next video, well, I, I went this far. Let me do even a little bit more. Without you knowing, you just slowly become your own demise. Because you got this feeling that you're just fucking invisible. I built this shit. I did this shit. You get money and you get fame and you think you're going to treat somebody like fucking shit that's been down with you? No, you don't do that motherfucking shit. Every view, every like, every subscriber just adds more and more fuel to the fire. <laughs> Damn, nigga really like built his own little empire. Like, I had to disappear from this shit for a whole fucking year. They don't know what I went through. They don't know my pain. They don't know my fucking struggle. They don't know why I chose to become the villain. It's the suspense, you feel me? That shit low-key funny. Great content, though. A whole fucking year since I've been here. It took me, like, four different tries just to try to make this fucking video. And I found myself, like, every single time, bro. Like, every time, like, I'm trying to fucking perfect it. Before this video, I had a whole professionally edited video. You know what I'm saying? With, like, the perfect, like comeback story like hey i've been gone for a whole year and look at this look at this perfect fucking life look at this perfect guy look at this perfect family look at this perfect shit it got to a point i'm, I'm looking at the video bro i'm like this shit is not even real like this ain't even real like why am i even doing this like, being a youtuber it, there's there's why a lot of pressure like, bro no like you want to be perfect for the world you want to you want to be the richest, coolest nigga. Like, why not? Who wouldn't want to be those things? But, like, it gets to a point that it becomes corny when it's not authentic. There you go. It becomes corny when you're forcing it. Never steer away from authentically being yourself because once you lose yourself, nigga, you can lose it all. And I, I saw it, myself bro. going down that path, and I'm like... Always stay true to yourself. Stop. I gotta put it into it, and... I decided to go on a break. A lot of the times when y'all are like, damn, I missed the old Fredo. I missed 2016 Fredo. Like, when I look back at 2016 Fredo, I see a corny ass nigga. Like, I'm, a, I'm just keeping it real. Like, the nigga was corny as fuck, but the thing about that nigga was that he was authentic. He was real. He was himself. Even if it was corny, I was authentically myself i wasn't trying to be nobody i wasn't trying to please nobody i wasn't trying to uh be a perfect nigga like i was just being me corny authentically what it was but it wasn't cousin me though i ain't do this i ain't do this first it was that man up there that's number one that's number one then it was y'all then it was y'all niggas it was y'all niggas bro <laughs> It was y'all niggas, bro. Y'all niggas believed in me, dog. For real. I ain't believe in myself last year. I was depressed, my nigga. I was depressed.
Oh, what do I want to do? Like this to the next level? It's simple. It's Shopify. Shopify. Things that, that are, are meant for you are always naturally going to come to you. You don't have to force it. You don't have to fake it. If it's meant for you and it's meant to be, it will always be. A year ago, I didn't even know none of this shit existed. I didn't know people watch someone play a video game. I didn't know about Twitch. I didn't know about none of that. I'm just I'm trying to tell y'all, all of this stuff is new to me. I'm I really this have to like time. This is insane. This is a dream. Keep about about God, if I can make this a career, like a lifelong career, million subs type shit, I would do it, bro. Because being able to just sit here and do what you love, like I love playing video games, I love entertaining, just having fun. That's awesome, dude. If I could do that, that's great. A lot of niggas forget, but I blew up overnight on this shit. I had over a million subscribers in less than a year of me doing YouTube. Got my second million less than a week after. I was getting so big so fast. Life was changing so fast. It got to a point I remember people used to be like, this nigga's view body. <laughs> Like, these are fake views and these are fake subscribers. It used to piss me off so fucking bad in the beginning because I was really putting in that work. I really grind. I really worked my ass fucking off. God, I didn't fucking care! I didn't fucking care! Let's go! Because once I really got into this YouTube shit, I fell in love with this shit. Like, it was never about money for me. It was always about seeing myself being self-made and self-built. I prided myself in my hard work. Prided myself on not taking handouts and not getting shout out. Like, doing the work myself. Not counting on a single soul to do anything for me. And I always wanted to be the very fucking best. So every fucking day, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, background. I told him. I told him I was gonna I'll do make it. Sad I as grind. Shit. I worked hard. No, no, I didn't put another nigga name in my mouth. No, no, I didn't ask for no handout. No, no handout, bitch. Fuck all y'all niggas. No handout. Nothing. No shout out. Nothing. Nothing. I grind. I grind. I grind for this shit. I did this and shit. I did put in work. I did this shit. Used to wash this man back then. Fredo, the hardest working nigga I've ever seen, like in this YouTube shit, for real, for real. like no cap. He probably do all this extra he shit, lying. probably all the extra shit. But when it comes to YouTube, like Fredo is the goat. Like he's really the probably the greatest of all time, for real. When it comes to this work ethic pushing us, like he push us crazy. Like even me, like with my video, like film that shit, film that shit, keys, film that shit. Even texting me when we not even talking, like Fredo texting me saying, "Bro, what you doing, nigga? Post some shit." Like it's been three, four months. When your dreams become actual reality you will quickly learn a very valuable lesson the hardest part in the journey is not getting to the top the hardest part is staying at that motherfucker there's a million other niggas that want to be just like you there's a million other niggas that wish they were you so every single day you're gonna be met at these crossroads like will i continue to do what i'm doing to maintain what i have or Am I gonna try every single day to try to take it up the next level? So you often will find yourself questioning your work, questioning your value, questioning the quality of your videos just because you want to be great. The want for more success can blind you. You were like filming videos and stuff. I think. Each video, you're trying to hit a million views. I think each video, you're pushing that boundary just a little bit more than you normally would. And then in the next video, well, I, I went this far. Let me do even a little bit more. And it just, like, kept going and going. And then you ended up in a cycle that you... It was like a hamster wheel that you just couldn't get off of. It, uh, that's probably Keep the... talking. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Trying to do it bigger and better. And meanwhile, while you're doing that, you're getting further and further and further away from yourself, honestly. Yourself. You know, like I'm doing shit that what? I typically wouldn't do. Oh. I'm hanging out with people that I would never fucking hang out with. Nope. Hey. <laughs> all, all for the purpose of views. It's like you were just chasing numbers. Numbers. Whether it was subscribers views money you're just chasing numbers yeah and along that way you were losing like the things that kind of mattered more
See, that's one thing I always made sure of myself. If I, when I do blow up, fuck the boys. When I do blow up, I'm gonna stay true to my self, bro. You feel me? Because I'm not about to just turn fake on my people, start doing weird shit. You feel me? Start just trying to chase. From hero to villain. Like, nah. The path is often paved with the shadows of choices, revealing the complex journey where noble intentions can succumb to the allure of darker paths. You get money and you get fame and you think you're going to treat somebody like fucking shit that's been down with you? No, you don't do that motherfucking shit. You're going to sit here for any second and make me feel bad because I put my brother on blast? I don't feel guilty for that shit. You're going to be accounted for the shit that you fucking do. It doesn't matter who you are. You can't sit here and, and, and have God right in front of me and say that what is going down is okay. You can't do that because you know what? God is going to look at you and he's going to say that shit is fucking wrong. My brother has gotten money. He has gotten fame and he don't know how to motherfucking act. That is sister. My own blood. Try to Damn. ruin me, my nigga. Do you hear what I said? My own fucking blood. My own sister tried to turn her back on me and try to put me out. For what? Around this time, a lot of crazy shit was going on behind the scenes with me and Jess. I had completely got to the point in a relationship where I did not give a fuck. I just started moving fucking reckless but the social media world had no idea about what was going on one thing led to another jasmine ended up going through my phone ended up taking text messages photos videos locations all from my phone and confining all of this information into my sister exposed everything went on her social media and blasted me as a cheater blasted everything that i was doing behind the scenes and this was the first time the very first time anything personal from my family was exposed online you want to sit there and and fucking be there for your little thought ass bitch she don't want her her nasty ass be out on the internet she better keep it cool because i'm gonna sit there and i'm gonna put her ass on blast again i got your number I I got your Instagram. I got every motherfucking thing, bitch. I know now, where you live. Why his going I got hard everything. like that though? Like... Try me if you want to. Try me. Try me. If I'm keeping it real, I'm surprised that this is his first time cheating. If it is, I kind of assume this guy was a scumbag from the jump, especially from how weird the videos on their channel have been lately. You made me feel like shit. You, you made me feel like a bad like because I didn't want to be with you. Yes. What the? Wait, no. If I want to see you, if I want to see you do better, if I want to see you do better, I don't give a. I was way too fucking gone and way too mixed yeah, up. I'm not gonna lie. At one to point, this nigga look good. Was not rip. taking accountability, not sticking by my girl's fucking side, not doing the things that you're supposed to do when you were real fucking man. I told you this to your face multiple times before any girl. Before. That's not true. So before. Did I not say that? We're done. The world just sat and watched me change right in front of their eyes. Up until this point, everybody fucking loved me. It's the perfect guy with the perfect family, great charisma. Then everything just started to change. I'm at the point right now when you use my name and video at the video at the video. You see this hand. I'm slapping this shit out your ass. That's it. I'm at that point. You just slowly become your own demise because you got this feeling that you're just fucking invisible. I built this shit. I did this shit. I told you to pull up in July. You didn't want to smoke, bro. You didn't want the fucking smoke, my nigga. On everything I love, you fucking capped out, my nigga. You capped out, you a bitch ass nigga on everything I fucking love, nigga. You capped out. Every view, every like, every subscriber just adds more and more fuel to the fire. You can't cancel me. I got this shit out the mud. The only nigga that can fall off by choice is me. If I choose to. If I choose to stop working, that would be the only reason. But I, I'm, I'm way too strong, my nigga. I slowly became the villain. 
Even if that wasn't me, it was now the new me. This video is tough. Like, it's well put together. I want to be the best. I'm going to be the best. Every nigga around me, we will be the best. Why? Because I believe in myself. I believe in my brand. I believe in the niggas around me. And that's what it is. And that's what it is. And this is why SSH will reign forever. In the pursuit of success, our aspirations can become a blinding force, leading us to actions we never thought we would take. Becoming a villain came with very temporary pleasures. It's a really risky game to play with the universe. You see, because the energy that you put into this world always has a way of finding its way back to us. Most times through that motherfucker we call karma. Only nigga that can fall off by choice is me. If I choose to. If I choose to stop working, that would be the only reason. But I, I'm, I'm way too strong right now. Life for me soon after got so bad. I reached some of the lowest points of my life I've ever had. Struggling to find that strength that I always knew that I had, I suddenly felt weak at times. The constant silence of being alone was just a constant reminder of dreams being shattered and opportunity being lost. Only to realize that in life, relentless in its challenges, it will only continue to test yeah. us. I really used to watch this nigga. You know, a lot of y'all used to watch this nigga in school, so. People that's tuned in watching with me, appreciate you. The biggest thing in 2023 that really fucked me up was my mom's health, all right? Now, I didn't want to make this no sad video, and I'm not trying to get no sympathy, none of that shit. Like, I'm keeping it real and raw with you guys. Like, early 2023, my mom, you know, her kidneys haven't always been the best. You know, she is a lot older. And, um, like, her health just started declining really fast. Like, she got really sick, ended up going into the hospital literally for the entire year. Like, me and my dad was at the hospital every fucking day. Oh, she's sleeping. Carol. Eva, go up there. Go touch her. Grammy. We have a surprise. Ava. Mm -hmm. Oh, my girl. Okay. I miss you. Aww. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in the hospital looking at my mom, seeing my mom on the hospital bed, thinking one of these days, any day now, I could lose my mom. Like, that's legitimately how I was feeling all of 2023. When she first got in the, in the hospital, I'm thinking, you know, all right, she might be here for a little bit, you know, uh, things are gonna get better, things are gonna be good, but like, time just kept going. The moment just kept going and it just kept getting worse. Like, I kept seeing my mom's health decline so bad that it got to a point that the doctors came to us and told us like, hey, y'all, do y'all wanna sign do not resuscitate forms, all right? Do not resuscitate forms are basically meaning like, it get to a point where they need to bring her back to life, it's probably in your best decision to not do so because her health is so bad. I remember like going to the hospital to see her and she was telling me about the DNR and she's like, why would they, you know, ask me to sign that? And then I feel so bad for Fredo because it's like you grew up basically just with them, you know? And you've never had to, like, experience, like, loss or anything like that, you know? Like, I have. It was, it was just so hard because my family's so small. My parents is damn near the only thing I have other than Jasmine and Ava. And getting to the point where you're seeing her in the hospital bed, like, damn near almost lifeless at times. Like, 
almost to the point like you're looking at her you're like, like how, how the fuck, fuck is she still, still in the ring like, like how is this, this and how is she even gonna get better how is she here? gonna get better will she ever get better you know will this ever stop and the thing about it it just it, it just kept kind of it kept getting worse found myself like taking steps forward but shit i mean my mom is damn near fucking dying nigga like i couldn't mentally keep that Dang. shit together bro every shit fucking got... time i stepped forward bro that shit just kept Thinking pulling me back shit. i just wanted a break man i wanted that shit to be over with like no, i wanted not. something to happen something to break through because dealing with that shit was just so heavy on my chest i couldn't i couldn't mentally i couldn't i couldn't get it together find much positivity in anything that was happening because you're in the hospital every single day you're just like surrounded by so much darkness darkness it's hard it's to scary. find any type of light and i think had the mindset of being on a break but it's like it kind of like happened for a reason in the sense where like you were able to physically be here every day basically just committed my whole year to you know, being by my family side, you know, being by my mom's side, being being here for my dad because, you know, they needed me. They needed my presence. So I spent every single day in 2023, you know, being there for them. <laughs> Mom looks so beautiful. I know. Oh my God. It looks just like them, right? Yo, she's crying. She's crying. Mom looks so beautiful. I know, man. I'm Bobby, and I got, I got Botox Cosmetic. There was a particular photograph. The lines were so the same person. The, the most yeah, important I'm trip, I'm trip, thing that I learned on this whole journey is that your words hold a very valuable place in this universe, all right? There was two times in this film where I literally spoke my fucking future into existence, you know? And I just want to take this moment right now, manifest some things, to put some good words, good energy into the air, you know? That energy that you put into this world is always going to fucking come back to you. So that's what I want to do. So number one, be my mom. I love you so fucking much. You mean the fucking world to me. <laughs> I just want to put into the universe that you will be okay. You will get better. I'm here for you every fucking day, and I'm thankful for you, and I love you. The second thing I want to put into the universe is that I want to chase this success again. I want to chase being fucking great again, but the right way. I want to do this shit the right fucking way. I know that I'm fucking great. I know that I can be great, but I'll never be great if my intentions are wrong. So I just want to put into the universe 10 million fucking subscribers this year. I'm gonna work my fucking ass off. I'm not afraid of no grind. I'm not afraid of the struggle and shit. Whatever it gotta take, whatever it gotta be, I'm gonna do it. I'm here. Y'all don't understand how hard this fucking year was for me. Like, it was so many times, bro, I wanted to fucking quit and I wanted to get back here. I wanted to get back into a place where, you know, I can get back on camera just for y'all, you know? So I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for always standing by my side. Thank y'all for always believing in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. Y'all fucking believed in me, dog. Y'all give me fucking hope. It's y'all niggas, bro. It be y'all niggas that be giving us hope, these YouTubers hope. So I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all. I love y'all. I know these years have been fucking crazy, but Fredo is here, baby. I'm, I'm fucking here. I'm here in my rawest form. I love you guys. This documentary is fucking over. I did it for you guys. I made it out that dark place for you fucking oh, guys. Cool. I love you guys. Thank y'all. Mm -hmm. I love y'all. I fucking love y'all. I love y'all. I'm out. Glad to hear that man's doing better for himself because I'm not gonna lie, there was a point where he was definitely going downhill, bro. Like he was just doing a lot of shit that Didn't need to be done. Yeah. But that's that video, man. But nah, there is if there is one thing from this video that I did pick up, and I hope y'all did too, is that stay true to yourself, bro. Don't ever let no type of money, 
fame change who you are, bro. Stay true to yourself. Remember how you came up. Remember who you came up with. Always be humble, bro. You feel me? Always. And yeah. But hey, man. Hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. It was good to see a little Pretty Boy Fredo update. You feel me? I haven't seen a post in a little minute, so it was cool to see that little video right there. A lot of y'all probably don't even know who the fuck this is, but for the niggas that do, hey, man. Yeah. But I'm going to see you on the next video. Follow me on my socials down below. You feel me? And I'm going to see you on the next video tomorrow.